One day, uh, Representative Melissa Hortman stated that women and minorities are being ignored on the floor and being lowered, essentially ignored in the legislative process. Do any of you think that is true, and can you give me any examples? I think that is true. <laughs> Not only on the floor, but in our state. You know, I've carried bills that talks about the, the wage gap in the state, where you have African American, Native American, Asian Americans who are making 60 plus cents to the dollar, with Latino making about 57 cents to the dollar, and white women somewhere between 78 and 80 cents to the dollar. So we know that we bring value to this state, and often enough, um, our voices are missing from the table. Decision-making process is not fair and just. And um, I, I think we can all agree that um, on the House floor, um, we can feel discounted. And within our state and within in our community and our district, we feel that same part of being discounted. Did anybody else want to add to that? Or? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so just to, to add to that point, um, we doubled our numbers in the, the House DFL caucus, right, of individuals of color and indigenous members. I think you see what impact that is having, both on this package, but also how we amplify one another's voices. Um, it's not going to stop. And, and I think that, you know, the point is, um, we're changing the conversation. We're changing the conversation. And maybe what you saw happen on the floor is a reflection of what happens outside of this building as well. Um, but that's why we're here. And that's why we're going to keep working. And that's why we've put this package together, to let folks know that our voices have value. Um, and we're going to keep talking and keep introducing policies that we are good, think are good for the entire state of Minnesota.